may be half a century old, but the laser is still the definitive single-handed sailing dinghy. Originally designed as a simple, off-the-beach recreational boat, the one-design nature of the laser soon made it very popular for serious racing. It made its first Olympic appearance at the 1996 Games, when Robert Scheidt from Brazil narrowly won the gold medal ahead of Great Britain's 19-year-old Ben Ainsley. Measuring 4.19 metres long with a 7 square metre sail, lasers are supplied at the games by the organisers, so there's no technical advantage for any sailor. So bring your wetsuit and go racing! Just make sure you have legs of steel and core strength in abundance because hiking the laser is brutally hard for all but the very fittest athletes. A good weight for a laser sailor is just over 80 kilos and it helps if you're at least 1.8 metres tall. The past two gold medals in the laser have gone to Australian sailors Tom Slingsby in 2012 and Tom Burton in 2016. Having beaten Burton to selection for Tokyo, Matt Wern is one of a number looking to step up to the top of the Enoshima podium. London 2012 silver medalist and twice world champion Pavlos Contides is out to prove that small nations like Cyprus can succeed against the athletes from bigger sailing powers like Britain's Elliot Hansen, France's Jean-Baptiste Bernaz and Germany's Philipp Bouvier. 25 years on from winning that first ever laser gold medal in Atlanta, five-time Olympic medalist and all-time greatest laser sailor Robert Scheidt might yet win a sixth medal for Brazil, even at the age of 48. At 35 boats strong, the laser is the second largest Olympic field. Racing commences on the 26th of July. Yeah, it hit me pretty hard when we were standing behind the dais. Uh, and yeah, again, when the national anthem was being played, uh, it's obviously such a privilege to, to, to win a gold medal and to, to continue the legacy for Australia and the laser as well. Uh, it's such an honour and, yeah, I mean, all the heartache, all the, all the sacrifices, it, uh, yeah, it all feels, feels amazing now. been a bit crazy today but um, I know they'll be be back home partying hard and, and celebrating on my behalf back there and yeah I can't can't wait to get back tonight and uh, have a chat to, to mum and dad and, and the rest of the family and uh, yeah share this experience. Obviously yeah, not, not a great way to start an event let alone the Olympics 
Um, yeah, you can't can't give any of the guys in the fleet a any points, and there was there was plenty of points to be had on that first day. So uh, yeah, it wasn't really the the focus after day two. Uh, we just sort of went out to to, to race our best and, and continue our processes and. Yeah, I was obviously just fortunate enough to, to put together a few good days and um, yeah, just sort of let the results sort themselves out in the end and uh, yeah, it was lucky enough to have won with a, with a day to spare but yeah, it was, it was looking pretty bleak after that first day. Laser radial is the same 4.19 meter hull as used by the men in the Laser Standard fleet, except that the sail is just over a square meter smaller, measuring 5.76 square meters. The radial made its first Olympic appearance as the women's single-handed boat at the 2008 Games in China, and, like the men's laser, requires immense cardiovascular fitness and core strength. A good racing weight for the radial is around 65 kilograms, although heavier than that is no bad thing when the sea gets choppy or wavy. With silver and gold from the past two games, Marit Baumeister of the Netherlands looks well placed in Tokyo to score a hat-trick of Olympic medals. The Dutch sailor will be hard pushed to match gold from Rio 2016 though, with the Rio bronze medalist Anne-Marie Rindom of Denmark looking powerful throughout the Tokyo cycle, winning the 2019 world title amongst many other medals on the world stage. 2018 world champion Emma Plaskart of Belgium is another serious medal contender. Poland, Greece and Japan are also pinning high hopes on their athletes reaching the radial podium in Enoshima. Making a late run for the Games after competing in the Volvo Ocean Race, then trying her hand at a 49er FX skiff campaign, is Ireland's Annalise Murphy. After narrowly missing a medal at London 2012, Murphy worked hard on her speed in light winds to win a silver at Rio 2016. At 1.86 metres tall, she's always been quick in strong winds and despite her lack of recent time in the boat, could yet win a second Olympic medal in the rolling waves of Enoshima. The largest fleet at the Games, with 44 athletes, Laser Radial Racing will start on the 26th of July. It was, it was good for me, it was a good position to be in, but um, I got a lot of um, uh, seaweeds in my baler, so I couldn't bail all the water out. And that was a little bit um, unusual for this place. I've never seen so much seagrass um, inside my boat, so I was a little bit surprised and I couldn't get it out. So um, that created some extra pressure for me on that first downwind. And then the right shift came where I wasn't prepared for that either. So um, I saw these uh, two amazing girls behind me, uh, besides me, um, overtaking me. Um, and that created a lot of stress. But um, yeah, I'm happy that uh, I kind of stayed cool and, and sailed uh, as much as I could. I gave it all. I gave it my all. And um, yeah. I'm just really stoked that uh, all of us could show uh, the whole world how great sailing is. And I think that's actually the most important thing to me, to show all the kids at home that sailing is just, it's truly an amazing sport. And um, we don't have so many options to do that. And I think that's unfair. And I really hope in the future that we have more opportunities like this. So many friends and families and and people at home writing to me and saying, wow, this sport is so, it's so great and finally we can watch it. And that's just, yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm honored to be in the sport because I love sailing. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> A big thank you for uh, letting this Olympic happen. I, I think we all were in a doubt that it was going to happen or not. And uh, it's it's truly amazing that in these times that it can just that they made it happen. I'm 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 so stoked. I'm so happy. It's it's amazing. There is not so many words like it's undescribable how much uh, how happy I am. 
I think all of us have worked so hard to, to be here. So for that dream to fall apart, if it didn't happen, it would be just unbearable. So I'm, I'm super happy that all of this can, that, it, that all people made it happen, yeah. The RSX men's windsurfing athletes use the same equipment as the women, except with a larger 9.5 square meter sail. Windsurfers are looking for the maximum power to weight ratio, which is why they tend to be strong but wiry in stature. It can also pay to be tall, which was part of the reason why Dorian van Rieselberger at 1.9 meters was able to dominate the past two Olympic games in 2012 and 2016. The Dutchman was working towards a third Olympic goal for Tokyo, but lost out in the selection trials to his good friend and close training partner Kieran Badlow, who goes to his first games. Winner of the past three RSX World Championships, Badlow is the clear favourite for gold, and with de Oish in the women's division, it could be a Dutch double victory in the windsurfing. Second at this year's World Championships, Mattia Camboni has benefited from an extra year's build-up to Tokyo and could win a medal for Italy. Greece's Viron Kokalanis, at 35 years old, is one of the oldest and most experienced competitors, but his third place at the 2021 Worlds suggests he still has the fitness and drive to get on the podium. The French, Polish and Chinese sailors have to fight hard in their respective national squads simply to earn Olympic selection. So Thomas Goya, Piotr Mishka and Kun Bi will all be in contention for the medals in Tokyo. The starting gun for the 25 men on the RSX windsurfer will sound on Monday the 26th of July. us as athletes it's just really nice that we had the opportunity to showcase our sport at the highest level which is the Olympics and yeah I'm aware that the, the situation in the world now is a little bit critical and we're just really happy that we managed to participate here uh, everybody is, is safe and that we're you know going home by the end and the lucky three of us sitting here with the medals and I'm just really thankful that we got the opportunity to participate in the Olympics. It's uh, quite a unique look, so uh, I did expect a lot of people to make uh, comments about it. But no, it's more for my psychological state, you know. I take the sharp edge of a serious competition. I feel a bit more relaxed uh, by not treating it that serious. And that way my racing goes quite well. So I think it was uh, mostly for me, but I'm happy everybody else enjoyed it as well. If we just performed and uh, if we just believed in what we were capable of, uh, the outcome would be, be good. So. Yeah, the nerves never took place because we're not used to letting them take place. So uh, yeah, no, they're they're not there. Mm -hmm.